board meeting for Wednesday, June the 16th, 2021. The time is 12 p.m. And we're gonna go ahead and start with a roll call. Here. Here. Larry Hernandez. Luis Flores. Present. Mayor Hernandez. Mayor Pro Tem Chavez. Commissioner Medina. Ed Wiley, City Manager. Anali Alanis, Assistant City Manager. Luis Bassan, Bridge Director. Present. Fred Brown, Director of Operations. Present. Carla Saavedra, Finance Director. Present. City Attorney Patricia Rigney. Chris Hinojosa is in her place. Present. City Engineer Omar Ansandua. Present. Police Chief Andy Harvey. Here. We need a motion to excuse uh, Larry Hernandez. Motion. A motion by Mr. Martinez. Second. Second by Mr. Flores. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Now please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance and the invocation by Luis. Please stay standing. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us pray. Father, we come to you this hour asking for your blessing and help as we are gathered together. We pray for guidance in the matters at hand and ask that you would clearly show us how to conduct our work with a spirit of joy and enthusiasm. Give us the desire to find ways to excel in our work and the intelligence to make the right decisions. Amen. We're going to go to item item two, which is the director's administrative report. And we're going to start with uh, crossing and revenues report for May 2021. Good afternoon, uh, Chairman, board members, city officials. For the record, Fred Brown, Director of Operations at the Far Bridge. I'd like to present the crossings and revenues for the fiscal year 2020-2021 uh, for the month of May. On page number three, we have the car crossings. These are cars that are traveling from US to Mexico through the Far Bridge. For the month of May, we crossed a total of 38,493 cars, which represents an increase of 10,715 cars or an increase of 38.57%. Uh, year to date, total crossings from October to May, uh, car crossings show an increase of uh, 38,194 cars or an increase of 12.31% over the eight month period in fiscal year 2019-2020. Also I'd like to present the other crossings from other ports of entry. We have Gateway in Brownsville, Gateway an increase of 27,172, Veteran Los Tomates an increase of 41,670, Free Trade Los Indios an increase of 8,142, a combination of all three bridges an increase of 76,984 cars, which represents an increase of 55%. Eagle Pass, they had an increase of 47,280 cars, which represents an increase of 39%. Laredo Bridge, they had an increase of 60,382, an increase of 28%. Macallan Hidalgo, an increase of 41,594, which represents an increase of 36%. And Saldúas Bridge, they had an increase of 27,557, an increase of 74%. A combination of both bridges, uh, total crossing 69,151 cars, an increase, which represents an increase of 45%. Progressive Bridge, they had an increase of 12,290, an increase of 41%. Donna Bridge, they had an increase uh, of uh, 16,247 cars, which represents an increase of 84%. The Far Bridge, again, we have a total increase of 10,715 cars, which represents an increase of 38.57% for the month of May. Page number four, we have the truck crossings for the month of May. These are trucks that are traveling from U.S. to Mexico through the Far Bridge. Total crossing for the month of May, we cross a total of 58,584 trucks, which represents an increase of 9,405 more trucks, or an increase of 19.12%. Overall, from October to May, the Far International Bridge crossed a total of 471,712 trucks, which represents an increase of 61,404, or an increase of 14.97%, 15% from October to May. 
also like to present the other cross of, uh, other uh, crossings from other ports of entry for trucks. We have better in los tomates, an increase of 7,242 trucks. Free trade los indios, a decrease of 697 trucks. A combination of both bridges, an increase of 6,545 6, or an increase of 43%. Eagle Pass, they had an increase of 4,961, 48% increase. Laredo Bridge, they had an increase of 56,691 more trucks, 40% increase. The Far Bridge, we had an increase of 9,405, an increase of 19%. Progressive Bridge, they had a decrease of 180 trucks, which represents a decrease of 5%. And Saldua's Bridge, they had an increase of 808 trucks, or 82% increase for the month of May. On page number five, I'm sorry, page number, yes, number five, sorry. These are trucks that are traveling from Mexico through the US, to the US through the Far Bridge. Total crossings for the month of May, uh, CBP crossed a total of 59,248 trucks, which represents an increase of 9,797 or an increase of 19.81%. Uh, total crossings increased from October to May, we a CBP show an increase of 53,787 more trucks or an increase of 12.63% over the same month period from October to May in fiscal year 2019-2020. On the agriculture side, the Far International Bridge crossed a total of 18,094 crossings for the month of May in perishables, which represents an increase, uh, a percentage of 31% of all the imports coming from US to, from Mexico to the US. As well, on the agriculture side, the Far International Bridge import lot show an increase of 1,007 trucks, more trucks, or an increase of 5.89% for the month of May. And uh, page number six, uh, again, this is a new report, a new, uh, the, Mr. Bassan wanted to, for us to present. These are both a combination of both, this is southbound and northbound truck crossings for the for the month of May. We crossed a total of 117,832 trucks, which represents an increase of 14,065 more trucks compared to last year, same month, or an increase of 13.55%. On page number seven, for revenues collected for the month of May, we collected a total of $1,299,017 which represents an increase of $258,593 or an increase of 24.85%. Overall, from October to May, we collected a total of $10,884,551, which represents an increase of $1,400,825 or an increase of 14.77%. Uh, board member, Chairman, this concludes my report. If you have any questions, <clears throat> if not, Thank you very much. It was an overall very, very good month. How does this uh, month uh, look? This coming month, uh, definitely right now, we have an increase uh, right now, total of close to 2,000 more trucks as well in cars. Uh, as you know, we have some, uh, some the new uh, SAT, which is here, they're gonna give you a, an update on the new program that SAT is implementing on the Mexican side. We've been having some issues. On those days, they implemented that program on Tuesdays and on Thursdays. So we've been having some issues. We had to close for cars from about two in the afternoon all the way to 8 p.m. because of that new system. And we might see a decrease this month. But uh, let's see what prices. happens. Right now, we, we're up on cars and, and on trucks as well. And at those times, you're closing, obviously, the, the southbound because northbound. It's only southbound, southbound, yes, no, no. because we have cars coming in from Mexico from four to six, so we have to definitely, to prevent any accidents, we have to close uh, southbound car crossings. All right. Mr. Bowen, mm -hmm. uh, in Laredo, the report you have here, it's the Columbia Bridge and Laredo combined or no? Yes, sir. It's both. So both bridges. You don't know how the effect is that the, the when they switched a lot of cargo, uh, certain types to go to Colombia if it increased over there and decreased in Laredo or because they left CD path in in the World Trade Bridge and not the Colombia definitely they, they they one of them just definitely they did show an impact uh if you would like to I can separate those two bridges that way you can know the um well, the, it'd be interesting to know since they left the the CD path in one bridge and they left the, the, the empty, they moved one, the empties to the Colombia the bridge the majority of agriculture is not not CD path so exactly it'll be interesting to know how that that change happened because it moved a lot of truck terminals from Nolaredo to the outskirts where before there was no development and now uh, that that kind of 
grew. So it's very, very in, in, industry specific, right? Uh, that that bridge in uh, Colombia. So okay. that that experiment would would be nice to monitor. Let me it, talk to that, the because it's it's been what a year since that happened, or it's more or less about. Eight, 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 months. eight months more or less. Yeah, so, I mean, it would be good to separate those two bridges to know yeah. how the impact happened to them, right? because mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's going to switch the the routes for some carriers and some some importers and how the development is on the U.S. side, right? because that, that change, it, it, it started the, having a lot of uh, refrigerator the, warehouses on the U.S. side on that side of, the, of Laredo. So, exactly. I mean, it may be good to monitor because it, that would be good to uh, have that information to be able to make decisions on this side. And because of those changes, we have seen an increase of companies coming this way through the far bridge. Yeah. But uh, let me talk to the director of operations on the Laredo uh, bridge so he can hopefully get that information for y'all as well. I'll okay. work on it, yes. Okay, one, okay. one question also, do you know, like, uh, I've seen a lot of activity happening in Brownsville with the overweight or there, there, there's nothing, uh, see plan with the new expansion of, to put something there on a certain lane for overweight or something like that? Or Going southbound? Southbound or northbound? Yes. Yeah. There, there. I mean, we'll, we'll, I mean, we'll wait for maybe at least to comment on that. I know there were there were uh, about twelve years ago there were plans to for us to install uh, um, uh, weighted motions at the at the tobos. They were kind of uh, expensive. They were very expensive, and this, we did away with that uh, that that uh, that uh, program that we wanted to install. Uh, Proximity uh, move, uh, weighted motions there at the tow booth, so we can charge additional for for trucks carrying more than eighty thousand pounds. But we'll look into it. Yes, sir. No problem. We'll follow up. Yeah. Thank Perfect. you. Right. Quick comment on yes, on, um, on the ag trucks or on the ag side. We're hitting numbers that we usually hit during the peak season of the produce season. Mm -hmm. Typically or historically, come April, the ag crossings start scaling down. Uh, number of reasons, I think, uh, May typically is a month that we're maybe 14,000 trucks, 15,000. Uh -huh. That's a lot. So we're at 18,000. That, that, these are numbers that yes. we see in in in, uh, in peak months. December, January, during, during the peak months. Um, plus, yeah, I mean, a lot of factors, a lot of consumption's up, what have you, but these are, these are outstanding numbers. And if you're seeing this <clears throat> now... Increase. Heading into June, there's less and less domestic crops, so imports. The U.S. will rely more on imports during these the summer months for uh, for perishables. So uh, these are very these are alarming numbers. This is huge. Yes, yeah, definitely. This uh, new per new perishable season is going to be we're going to have a big a number of of, of, of uh, produce crossing our our bridge. Definitely, if we see an increase uh, this month of a thousand. Can you imagine October, November, December, January, March, which is a big month? We we'll definitely will see a, a high volume of trucks coming this way. Heading into the, the end of the season, like you're speaking domestic crops, mm -hmm. we had a freeze, a store yes. freeze. We had record rainfall in the last couple of weeks, two months, ruined a lot of crops. Exactly. So expect next year's the the, the early outlook. Uh, us as domestic growers, we, we grow in, in, the, in the Rio Grande Valley, we grow in, in Mexico. The domestic, the outlook for the next 12 months is to decrease even more in the U.S. So that means a rise for Process. 2022 on imports. Yes, so that, that is correct. Weather, all, all these external factors. An impact play. on the, on the, on the yeah. crop. Thank Good you. Job. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We're going to move on to line item B, which is the finance report for May 2021. Yes, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, city administrators, for the record, Luis Bazan, bridge director. We do have Carla Saavedra, uh, finance director for the city. She'll give you a, a, a quick report on what's going on with the finance. Good afternoon. For the record, Carla Saavedra, finance director. I wanted to change it up a little bit this month and uh, go ahead and present the report in a more colorful way. Um, for to be more eye-catching. So if you can just follow me, it's a very short report, uh, pretty much summarizes pretty much how the bridge is doing. Mm -hmm. So on page one, um, I'm showing a comparison of the year-to-day collections as of May, like revenue collected compared to the prior year and uh, compared to the budget amount. So if you notice, as of May, we anticipated that we were gonna collect 
$9.4 million, we've actually collected 10.3, which is, you know, which is pretty good. And I'm also doing the comparison compared to last year. Um, and at the bottom, I'm just breaking down the expenses just to see in what categories, categories goes to. And this is pretty much the same as the previous report that you used to see in Excel. This is just more like a, I started doing this uh, citywide. Um, so if you would, if you would like, I would add again the Excel report um, in the next meeting so that you can see also, but I would like to start including these. Uh, I don't think anybody understands the Excel report. Right. And that's, that, that, that's what I'm saying. That's the reason. That's the reason why I wanted to to bring this one up, just to see. <laughs> maybe maybe Beto can explain the Excel report. Yes, and again, I've done this for for the city monthly reports, like citywide, and I'm like, you know what? Let's just start doing it for the bridge as well. So, if you have any questions here, and see at the bottom, net operating profit four point five million dollars. Like that's that's the stuff that you want to know. So, as of May, uh, the bridge has uh, produced four point five million dollars. Now, the page number two, down one, I'm showing like the benchmark of each line item for the budget. So, for example, what I'm saying is that as of May, we want to be at six, seven, sixty-seven percent the top uh, in expenditures. So the red, I'm showing. Okay, in personnel, we've spent so far uh, sixty percent, and the target is sixty-seven. So the fact that we're below sixty-seven percent, it's pretty good because we're below budget. So again, I hope that you that this is easier for you to understand. Uh, and give you the better pick the, the bigger picture. Yeah. Now on page number three, it's pretty much summarizing what uh, Mr. Brown went over in the crossings. I'm just summarizing and my percentage increases only give the year to date with Mr. Brown already presented. So I'm just comparing it from you know and what, what I'm trying to make a pretty graph from one year to the other, trucks and cars combined, southbound, northbound, and cars. The only thing there, Carla, is it doesn't say what the budget is, no? I would, I would add the total budget. Like for example, for this year, it's $14.1 million. Yeah, but for line item, huh? you just know I can, I can add the numbers, definitely, yes. So I can add, uh, by the next meeting, I can be a little bit more specific with that. The operating budget for, for the for the calendar year or for the fiscal year is, is what? 14, 14 million dollars. This yeah. year is 14.1 million dollars. Yeah. Operating. No, not operating. I'm sorry. Uh, operating uh, is usually 3.8 to, to 4. No. <laughs> operating is usually 3.8 to 4 million dollars. Right. Mm -hmm. And I can, again, I can be more specific in that page to summarize that. So the trend is we should, or the bridge should be at about maybe close to 2 million over budget on on revenue, on yes. budget. Right. That's great. But in the insurance, it's already 92%. <laughs> well, but that one, just to make clarification, that's a one-time payment. So uh, of course uh, it's already it's already covered. We're not uh, gonna spend anything else. Oh, so you're not, you're not financing any of the insurance right. payments. From your own. So any any other questions or more suggestions that you would like to that's add me great. on uh, add on this report? Yeah. Was, uh, the personal is up, but I'm sure over time has been crazy with people closing, construction, freezes, but protests. We're, well, yeah, but I mean, we, we're still we're still good below budget. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. Any anything else? No, it's, it's been more than helpful. Thank you, Carla. Okay, thank you. thank you very much. Remember, they're gonna be able to travel now. <laughs> Thank you, Carla. That was a huge help. And and we have another half of a bridge. So we got to you, you, you gotta huh? you gotta carry that over, no? Next year, spend in the budget. That, 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 that and, wasn't you, no? And if I may add, we are in budget session still. So we just finished submitting the final budget steps uh, this past week, this Monday. Uh, so we're going to be meeting with executive management, I, I believe, here on the 7th or the 9th of July, if I'm not mistaken. So we'll see how it goes. But um, fingers crossed, everything is, is looking really well, really good. There's a there's a change. There's changes that we're going to be making, obviously, with capital outlay, with fleet and, and some of the, some of the other bigger, bigger items within our budget. But uh, more importantly, also the travel and the promotion 
and the advertising, the marketing overall. Uh, so we're we're excited about uh, what the future holds. Now, obviously, also with the with the economy opening up a little bit more than it was, it, the easing of the restrictions, it's also going to make a lot our life a little bit easier to get on that travel mode and start promoting again. So you guys have the budget this uh, coming soon, like to, to yeah. So the budget starts in September, uh, October first. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. So we have the budget workshop, I believe, lined up for some time in early early August. So right now we're going through the bud uh, budget process with finance and city management. Is, is there any like no proposal that you're going to add on the budget for this year? Like uh, like I like said, the weight in motion because well, like everyone's looking at at adding yeah. more more cargo, more weight, and uh, because. From my uh, experience, from what I've been hearing mm -hmm. from my clients, the the ports are saturated in Long Beach and, and other 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 cities, and now they're looking at maximum ports to bring it in and then send it up north. So, yeah. I mean, if you if, if that's right now, people are asking a lot about Brownsville because of the, they have their own overweight corridor that's mm -hmm. already authorized and it's city mm -hmm. funded, and uh, might as well if you, if you don't know what they're sending, because all the maintenance costs is coming to the city instead of you charging it to the people that are going overweight and and sure. allocating that that expense to them. So as we know right now, the over our overweight corridor starts as soon as you hit a military highway, and that really continues all the way from between Cage Boulevard and Jackson Road, and it encompasses Anaya and Highline. Uh, because you know we didn't want any any of those shipments getting ticketed right with with DPS, uh, so that was something that the city did back then to ensure that all that area was covered. But with the International Bridge Trade Corridor, the IBTC, which is a connectivity for to all the bridges, uh, both eastbound, I mean both east and west, connecting to SH68 and SH365, that'll be your future overweight corridor. Now, when you talk about whim or way in motion, uh, the current or the BSIF facility that was built by TxDOT a few years a few years ago will finally open up in May. Uh, so the latest deadline on the la the latest update on that is that they'll be operational by May of next year. They have way in motion within the facility itself. Uh, but obviously, we're still looking. That's why I mentioned the capital outlay. So in the capital outlay, that's where we uh, you know uh, propose new projects. And additional funding that we'll need for for anything that is needed for operations or you know uh, for logistics purposes. Can, can you give us a little list of what you're going to propose? Because that weight in motion, I know you have an overweight, overweight corridor, but you're not charging the person that's going overweight. Mm -hmm. So the guy who's taking advantage of that, he's ruining the roads and he's not paying anything extra to pay for that. Yeah. Road. That's uh, that's an issue we brought up uh, with the trade on several occasions with the with the with the HCRMA. So we can we can always come back and and revisit that issue. Well, that, that was a the point of the charge for the overweight permit when they were crossing correct from mexico to, here, to reimburse the state yeah for for, for, for the, there's for a the deficit roads. in funding for and roadways and, and that's, that's what it you was. know but the weight in motion is just to charge if you're going over the bridge not if you're going on the roads uh so uh, i mean it's kind of two different but from what i understand excuse me if i'm wrong but brownsville put their own street to the, towards the bridge from the port and they control that and they, they they're able to but, but, monitor but it's, that it's probably that. the same issue as a not issue but the same setup that they have in progress i mean they're falling into a property to a private property private, the, you know, it's in private this, in this case it might not be private property but it uh, belongs to the city and it's designated so, so i mean that's something we will have to and again that's something we would have to obviously uh touch base and, and we've done it we've done it through bridge connect we've we've actually had meetings here uh with the local rma uh, to discuss these issues it's it's Questions that have come up by the trade regarding the overweight corridor, who charges, who gets what, what does it entail? It's 45,000 pounds additional to the 80,000 pounds that were there prior. So um, let me let me interrupt you there because I know they wanted to easy, an easier way to take care of the minutes. So uh -huh. I guess we're going to call the finance part <laughs> done if we have any more questions. And, Correct. And I guess that will be considered part of your yeah directors report. correct so yeah i did because you brought it up so i was going to mention it so okay. we can continue the conversation now if you'd like yeah okay Go ahead. Yeah. so like i said you know right now we're in budget mode budgets is budgets is in session so these are things we're going to be looking at whatever we put on there finance will look at it they will take a look at it with executive management and then we'll sit down with both of them here in the beginning of july to go over that list and see what what's going to work and what's not going to work i think i think uh part of what to suggest uh, it might be kind of like what the staging that the, the they're working on on on, on i road or close to i road mm -hmm. or veterans now um something like that for okay. overweight sure. trucks or 
or doubled, okay. which we, you know, we talked about se several times, maybe something adjacent to the exit that, that okay. they can, that they can, they can uh, switch out trailers and stuff like that in the future. Well, we'll be happy to get with engineering and start looking at some, some, some quotes, some, some price, some estimates to see how much that would cost uh, and, and see if it's viable, you know, for, for our operations, for, for our facilities. It depends where you want them. You know, I think we've talked about having way in motion as you're going southbound, but then we have scales in Mexico that weigh them as you're coming in from Mexico. And then you can actually ensure that that is the same weight once it gets to the U.S. side by getting to the to the U.S. scales. So, but we'll we'll look at we'll, we'll look at some of the options. If you have any suggestions, just send them my way. We'd be happy to discuss them with finance and engineering. Luis, just a quick comment on the sure. HCRMA. Uh, yeah. We had gotten some some reports comparisons with the HCRMA uh, scale B, I don't want to say fine, it's a B, uh, ver being slightly elevated versus other counties. Okay. I'm not sure how true that is, but that's just one of the okay. one of the comments that, that, that was brought up to, okay. to, to my attention. I'll be happy to bring it up to, just to HCRMA and see if we can discuss just that. Just if we're going to touch the topic. Just so Absolutely. Can... Oh, definitely. Yeah. Okay. You want to continue with whatever so yeah i have a couple of more items yes okay. so further on my director's report uh one of the things that we had discussed last month that we were we were supposed to do this month uh i reached out to cynthia again there's a couple of things that have not reached the governor's office yet i know yesterday the stack was finally signed uh by by the texas governor so we still got another policy another bridge policy that needs to be signed so once all that gets put in place uh, she'll come out here and give you a, a, a brief on what's going on with those three policies that we passed through legislation recently. Uh, the other thing we've been working on is, uh, well, actually one of the things that has been ongoing is obviously the reopening of the bridge to non-essential traffic. As we are aware, our, limit, our hours are very limited when it comes to vehicular, regular vehicular traffic because of the immigration crisis from back in 2019. So it hasn't really affected us and we're prioritizing trade. But as of yesterday, our understanding is that between Mexico and the U.S., I believe that Mallorca has met with Ebrard from Mexico and they reached an agreement that not until the border uh, along the border with Mexico and, and the state or the U.S. gets up on their vaccine rates, that's when they're going to be looking at maybe a way to open up the border. So it's not going to happen uh, anytime soon. It's not going to happen. I think most people are anticipating that it might happen on June the 21st. Uh, it might be extended another 30 days. As we know, it's been 30 at a time, 30 days at a time. Uh, but once that gets, you know, once we see the vaccine rates, as we've always known, that's been the biggest cause of this. Uh, so hopefully with that 1 million vaccines that the U.S. has been sending to Mexico, it looks like they're going to be prior prioritizing the entire border region in Mexico. So we're hoping to get those vaccine rates up. In regards to that. Have they already like give uh, some information on which vaccines they were gonna hold? Uh, I don't know. Okay, I, here I, is it gonna affect drivers? Is it gonna affect people who like yes, people that are essential yeah. workers? Or I, I don't think it's been down. To, uh, they're getting down to the specifics. All we know is the general understanding of how it's gonna work. And even then, if if you know that might not even work out the way that it's expected, right? I mean, we we don't know. It's just federal governments uh, that are working on both sides of the border. So we'll see. Okay. We shall see. And the other item that I have is a 24-hour survey. So as everybody's aware, it's public information because we sent it out to the trade. Uh, we ran a 24-hour survey. Uh, we did. We do have some results. Obviously, you know, as anybody would expect, yeah, everybody wants 24 hours, right? But uh, or at least the majority of of, uh, of the the, the end users of the bridge want 24 hours. But how do you justify opening 24 hours? There's a lot at stake. Uh, so we're we're looking at those things. Uh, as soon as we get the graphs, we get everything uh, we're squared away as far as putting the information into a format similar to what Carla did with the finance report, where it's easy to understand. Uh, we'll be uh, sending that out, uh, make sense of it, and then bring it to your attention at the next at the next bridge board meeting, uh, or potentially during an, a, a workshop or something of that nature. There's any other compromises instead of 24 hours? Like are they doing like an overtime feed? Uh, they open an hour later, two hour later? Or? Well, CBP can can attest to that. You know, they they do that all the time. <laughs> you know, CBP. Uh, we've been working with CBP for so for so long now that if there's if there's backups on the on the bridge or there's been issues in Mexico or there or the A system went down, they'll stay an additional two hours. They'll they'll go from 1600 hours to 24 hours uh, to 2400 hours. I'm sorry till midnight to even one o'clock in the morning to ensure that everything gets off of the bridge and everything gets through. No, but, but that's uh, direct with the city, with the, with the, the U.S. our friends at U.S. Customs, but I'm saying for like a request from a, 
a personal importer who imports 50 truckloads a day, 100 truckloads a day to us directly to the city so you can get an extension and they pay for their we've had a recent a recent request from one company but it wasn't 50 it was like one shipment (laughs) so but it's not it's not known to them that they can do it yeah well right now whenever but they wanted they fly it but it was after hours though it was after hours and it was southbound Mm -hmm. so that's after we shut our doors we shut down at 12 midnight Uh, please and and to touch up on on what you're mentioning uh so everybody's aware the board uh, Luis, uh, we've been working. Luis has been working heavily with the Mid Valley Custom Brokers. We've been getting a lot of feedback from them as far as you know what the issues are. Uh, the issue isn't just right. Stay open later, right? The, the survey was done just to kind of get feedback from the trade, but there's also uh, feedback that we're trying to collect and get ahead of the issues that arise in the summertime. We met last week with the with with TIPA, and and Luis has been meeting with uh, with the Mid Valley Broker Association. The congestion at night is mostly ag and there's a lot of pilot programs there's a lot of contingencies that can happen on that side what we've done is put together a list of items action items basically uh, a checklist mm-hmm. for importers and it all starts with timing uh i know a lot of the importers you know they want to they, they want to blame cvp it's it's not cvp a lot of it mm-hmm. is is uh no, what's sense. what's, what's uh, it, it's, it's internal operational deficiencies yeah. from the importer side so what we're doing is we're just being proactive and saying, look, here's a checklist. Get with your custom broker. Get with your right. U.S. custom broker, your Mexican custom broker. Make sure your transfer trucks are in order. Make sure our documentation is in order to expedite all that. Because a lot of times CVP cannot process if the documentation isn't isn't up to par. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing that can happen. Uh, one example that stood out and it's very common is uh, one of the one of the one of the people that we met with was uh, the he called it an HEB load. If there's one load that has five or six different commodities yeah. and okay. uh and, and they're high intensity high risk non-arp items well guess what that's going to delay the process gonna and he's going to delay the, the that truck is going to delay the process for the 50 trucks that are behind it you know so those these contingencies i think this year at least we're being a lot more proactive mm-hmm. just to avoid these issues moving forward not only because it's summertime but because there are better ways to make it more efficient. Their survey is great. Well, we know what they're going to say. Open mm-hmm. 24 hours. Correct. Everybody but, wants it. But, you know, but how do you trying justify to, it? We're, we're trying to stay mm-hmm. as efficient as possible. Yeah. And uh, we're reaching out to, to, to the other uh, member uh, trade association so that they can help us get, get this, this uh, the, in, the input and then get the input back out to the trade. Absolutely. And that's a good segue for the next point that I had to, to cover. That's why Stat is here today. Uh, so... Um, Unbeknownst to us, one of the things we've been pushing for, for for a while now in Mexico is that access corridor from the Caracol that we all call like the, Car- the Caracol to the aduana, right? Uh, so as of Monday, uh, Mexico started working on that. So they blocked a couple of lanes. So in other words, we're going from four lanes to two lanes on the Mexico side. So you're starting to see a little bit more of a backup than what we had before, a little bit more bottlenecking as we had previously seen. Uh, that also in line. That's also in line with what's going on with the aduana, and they're gonna they're gonna get into the uh, into the issue right now, which is they're trying to implement the cafete unico, which is what Fred was talking about earlier. So that's taking uh, also some 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 challenges. It's it's taking on some 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 bigger challenges, and that's where we're starting to see more of a backup along along uh, Cage Boulevard all the way to Anaya Road, uh, east and west on. On, on military highway. But at this time, I'd like to introduce Elizabeth Gonzalez and Eric Salinas. No sé quién vaya a presentar de ustedes para que nos hablen un poquito del tema de, de lo que están implementando ahorita ahí en la aduana para que le entiendan un poquito más porque estamos viendo ahorita un poquito más las filas un poquito más alargadas. Sí, por favor. Buenas tardes, consejo. Mi nombre es Elizabeth Quintana. Como decía, nos acompaña el subadministrador Eric Omar. Él se encuentra en el puente Benito Juárez. Eh, el, lo que estaba planteando del gafet único consiste en un gafet como este. El, las cámaras de transporte bajan la información a cada una de las empresas transportistas. Ellas son las encargadas de realizar el trámite de este gafet único ante la ventanilla única del Servicio de Administración Tributaria. Una vez que el operador del transporte ya cuenta con su gafet en el concepto de activo y operando, el agente aduanal realiza la operación, hace la asociación de la operación de comercio exterior a este gafet, que es el que van a presentar en los módulos que, eh, con los que cuenta la aduana de Ciudad Reynosa, habilitados. Eh, 
Este, recientemente el SAT ha implementado este proyecto en varias aduanas del país. Lo que busca con esto es que se realice con mayor eficacia las operaciones y que se procese un mayor número. De momento, al estar en un proceso de transición, eh, pues hay un poco de dudas, confusión, muchos operadores aún no cuentan con su gafet único. Esto lo tiene que gestionar cada uno de ellos. Tarda alrededor de tres meses en que concluya ya este, su proceso, donde les entreguen su gafet. Lo que nosotros suponemos por el concepto de largas filas acá hacia Estados Unidos es porque muchos no cuentan con su gafet. Lo que hacen las agencias aduanales es esperar que concluya el periodo de prueba, digamos, la ventana de tiempo que nosotros habilitamos los días martes y jueves. Este, en importación, lo que es exportación de ustedes, que es lo que les afecta, está habilitado de 9 de la mañana a 1 de la tarde. Disculpe. No sé si tengan... ¿Alguna duda o alguna otra pregunta? ¿Sí? Sí. Hola. Mira, una pregunta. Sí. Uh, eh, primero, primero que nada, gracias por darse la, la vuelta desde Reynosa aquí. Ya sé que tiene mucho trabajo. Este Muchas es el trabajo y les agradecemos su presencia aquí para informarnos de los cambios ahí en la aduana. Uh -huh. eh, en el gafete único, mira, yo, más o menos, yo sí también tengo camiones mexicanos, americanos ah, okay. y almacenes y ¿Sí? nacional. Por eso tengo un poquito de conocimiento con eso. Ok. Eh, Ahorita con el proceso que acaba de decir de tres meses, que lo saca ahí también a operadores, eh, cuando están así cambiando de trabajo, cuando estás consiguiendo un, un chofer, para tardarse tres meses para que vayan a trabajar contigo, va a ser un dilema, porque ahorita todos uh -huh. no saben cómo lo van a hacer, so, no sé si va a ser un poquito más ágil eso, porque muchos choferes cambian de sitio, cambian de tra trabajo, se los baja el trabajo con alguien, y no se pueden cambiar a trabajar por ese, ese gafete, y es ah. lo que veo como un, un dilema, porque una si se vez, tarda tres veces el proceso, eso no ya está. Ok, sí, una vez que ya cuenta con el gafet único, lo que hace al llegar a una nueva empresa es realizar el trámite como si fuera un, un nuevo trámite, pero y como ya cuenta con él, a el mismo sistema le va a solicitar los datos y le va a decir que ya cuenta con un gafet único. Lo único que hace es eh, realizar usted la aceptación, digamos, la, cumple la tarea de que ya está trabajando a, o asociándolo a su CAT. Oh, ok, no más que quién es el que le da de baja, que ya no trabaja ahí. Ah, ok. ¿El, el, el, el empleado o el, el, el empresario? Porque me dicen, no, no, puede, no, me, no, no quiere dar de baja el, el, ex, el ex empresa, no me quiere dar de baja. Me lo... está diciendo que no te vayas, no te vayas. Y lo no sé, pues dile. Que sí, la el, como en realidad el gafet digamos, es mío, yo como operador, pero al momento de que, si ya lo recibió, no hay ningún problema con eso, porque usted realizaría el registro como su operador para su empresa. Si en un momento dado eh, realizó únicamente lo que es la toma de huellas y de fotografía eh, en la aduana su operador, lo que tiene que hacer es realizar, si su, el, digamos, el patrón, no lo da de baja, lo que él tiene que realizar es de nueva cuenta su, su trámite. En esa ocasión, al no contar con el plástico, si sí es necesario eh, realizar, solicitar la baja. Si en un momento dado no, lo, no se la quieren dar, lo que tiene que hacer es, es reiniciar su trámite desde cero. Sí, pero ahí es donde dicen, pues voy a tardar tres meses de tramitarlo otra vez. De hecho, estamos esperando que, que sea más rápida la entrega de los gafets. Aquí la cuestión es de que se va alargando o se saque ese promedio porque en ocasiones las mismas empresas transportistas no completan las tareas. Entonces, es como una secuencia de pasos. De una vez que ya cuenta con su, con su documento impreso, lo que es la resolución de su trámite, se presenta en la oficina, en la aduana. Eh, los compañeros que llevan lo que es el, el enrolamiento tienen que realizar el procedimiento de toma de huellas, la fotografía. Una vez que concluye esa tarea, le llega, eh, digamos, el, la respuesta directamente al patrón a quien realizó el, el inicio del trámite. Tiene que aceptar la tarea para que el procedimiento siga. Por eso es que en promedio son tres meses entre lo que en ocasiones no entran a verificar si ya cuentan con una tarea pendiente. Okay. Uh -huh. claro, y, y solo para los que no estamos muy familiarizados con, ¿Sí? el, con el café. Y, y nos, nos puedes, digo, uh, a grande rasgo el café trae toda la documentación para, para el cruce. Okay. Al, al operador llegar cargado a la a la aduana, okay. ahí se le, se le va a escanear o, y, ah, y ahí okay. le va a determinar si entra a revisión o, okay. o procede. Eh, en cuanto a lo que es la operación ya con el gafet único, eh, en este momento la aduana trabaja de dos maneras. Eh, 
presentas el documento impreso, lo que llamamos nosotros el DODA, que ese es el que vas a presentar al módulo, el operador te lo pistolea y queda procesada tu operación. Dentro del, del mismo ciclo de la operación, eh, digamos, los martes y jueves, que son los que tenemos las ventanas de tiempo para el gafet único, el agente aduanal es el que realiza la asociación al gafet único del transportista. Ellos seleccionan el número de gafet al momento de crear su operación, generan lo que es su número de integración. Lo que nosotros eh, solicitamos o hemos recomendado es que se presenten con el documento impreso por si eh, el componente ya en el módulo de lo que es la aduana no pueda leer el gafet. Eh, en un momento dado, si no se puede leer, hay otra situación. En ese lapso de que llega el operador al módulo, tienen una aplicación descargada en su celular. La aplicación se llama Activa NI. Eh, Dependiendo de con cuántos agentes aduanales trabaje, son el número de operaciones que le van a asociar a su gafet. Aquí es importante que el operador, o sea, que reciba capacitación en cuanto a asociar el documento que yo te estoy entregando, es el que tú vas a presentar a despacho. Eh, vas a, a buscar en tu aplicación, ingresas y seleccionas, relacionas el documento, tu número de integración del documento con el que vas a presentar. Te aparece un listadito de operaciones y seleccionas este, y le colocas activar. Esa es la operación que, que te van a procesar o la que tú asociaste a tu gafet y es la que te va a leer en un momento dado la antena en el módulo. Okay. No, a ver si lo entiendo bien, porque ¿Sí? yo también así estoy, así ¿Sí? no estoy en la operación, pero son así siendo okay. yo los gafetes y todo. Eh, lo, que lo que yo entiendo, Edgar, y no sé si corrígeme señorita, si estoy mal, es que ya te están dando un gafete a los choferes y ya si yo cruzo por Matamoros, por Reynosa o Laredo, ya, ya saben quién es. Porque antes tenías que ir a cada aduana y meter papeles físicamente, arreglarlos o fotos y luego te daban un, un gafete y cam, cambiaban de administrador y tenías que sacar otro gafete, otro gafete. Pero a veces tenías choferes que no, pues yo cruzo por Matamoros, cruzo por uh, Laredo de acá y pues tenían tres gafetes ¿no? y tienen que meter los papeles en cada uno. Y lo que está diciendo ya se queda registrado con todos. ¿no? El segundo sí. es lo que operación, la, la selección, Así es, lo que se utilizaba antes era un café de cartón que tramitaban Como, en cada aduana que, en la que fueran a realizar operaciones. Así es, so ya están ligando, or they're, they're matching, uh, no sé si en inglés, pero a ver si estoy mal, si no me va a que me corrige. Están, li, uh, están ligando el uh, tractor con el, la caja y ahora ya el chofer. Ya las tres cosas están ligadas. Ya los papeles traen las tres cosas. Ya pueden identificar quién es entrando y quién es saliendo. Y ya, ya le tienen su, su background check acá de chofer, ya tienen todo. Y el lector va a determinar si entra a revisión o no. En un momento dado que ya presenta el, el café, lo lee, el, bueno, está la antena, se coloca, están las pantallas y ahí le va a aparecer el andén. En un momento dado, si le toca reconocimiento aduanero, te verá posicionarse en, en el andén 23. Y eh, hay una chicharra que hace un sonido para alertar al operador y que pues le tocó reconocimiento y tendría que posicionarse en plataforma ya sea importación o exportación. Si le toca desaduanamiento libre, va a aparecer la, la pantallita en verde Ajá. y tiene que seguir su camino. Sí. So, ahorita tú tenías que sacar a cada uno un, un gafete y físicamente esperaba una semana que te lo autorizaran, checaran. Y ahora ya, ya identificaron a la persona ¿verdad? por todos lados con huellas y todo, pero la única cosa es que cuando quiere cambiar de trabajo, when he wants to change jobs, he's got to wait three months. Mm -hmm. And so the guy, no, no te creo de baja, tú, tú te quedas conmigo. The driver's like, no, pues I can't go, I'm, hi I'm hijacked, I want to hire, I want to go with you, but I can't leave. But the, 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 something's got to be done there to be able to guy, guy uh, change, change employment. Mm -hmm. Muchas gracias. ¿Qué? Para servir. Pero sí, sí, que dieron la vuelta y sí, te, sí se ve un gran avance de eso. Nomás que ahora ya todos los choferes, ya, ya los empleados de la oficina están diciendo, yo también quiero un iPhone porque el chofer tiene que tener el app. Sí, y yo, para eh, activar bueno, la operación. El chofer es correcto. Tiene iPhone, mm -hmm. y ahí tiene, Muchas gracias. No sé, porque le necesita porque es digital. Gracias. Muchas gracias, gracias. Elizabeth. Uh, I'm going to do a quick change real quick on because I know Omar has to leave to another another meeting okay. at the bridge, as a matter of fact. So, uh, Omar, if you don't mind, if I'm oh, so we have Omar on Saldo, he's going to give you a quick report on what's going on with the bridge expansion and projects. Two projects under construction it's the bridge facility expansion phase two, and then the northbound lane and expansion, and the second BSF, BSIF exit. So, we can move the slide. This is the one at the, the Bridge Administration Office. As you can see, 
Uh, we're almost complete. We're about two weeks away from having substantial completion of the building itself. I know we added a couple components to the exterior, the parking lot, and that's going to take another four weeks, but we should be substantially complete at the administration building in about two weeks. Uh, and you can see kind of the contract time um, we did. That's a new parking lot we're adding to the back. We're adding a second dumpster and doing some drainage improvements as well, because we know that area in the back can get uh, flooding uh, during heavy rain. So we're adding a detention pond, some pipes, some connect, some connections there. So that's uh, that project. Any questions on that one? Um, then you can um, move to the next slide. This is the, uh, the F515 DAP, as we call, we broke it up into two projects. Uh, as you can see right now, as you can scroll, scroll through the pictures, uh, that's just the overall layout. As you can see, we're adding two new lanes and then the second BSF exit to the to the uh, state facility. Next slide. And you can see right now we're pouring the concrete. As you can see, uh, we have to do it in several panels. We can't pour all the concrete at once. There, you know, you got construction joints, so you got to uh, be swapping out which areas you, you uh, pour. And you can see the traffic there. And once we get those, once we get all the concrete poured, we're going to add two new booths to the, um, to the project as well. And those will have water and sewer connections. So those booths will have its own uh, restroom facilities. And you can kind of see um, kind of the, the, the activity. Next. And those are the two projects. Uh, I will talk also about the truck staging area. Uh, that's under design. We did have a meeting last week with uh, one landowner that had some opposition to that project. It's uh, Trans Maritime. I know he's, we're right abutting that, that their property. Uh, you know, we had a pretty long meeting. They, they kind of had a little bit of opposition that they didn't see the, the need for the project. We did explain to him that we had our own data and we, we had some, uh, they had some reservations, but at the end of the day, the project's still going to move forward. Uh, it's just a formality that we had to go through for the environmental clearance that we had to send out um, notices, and they they were the ones that responded with some uh, opposition to the project. Uh, other than that, we're looking to that project to get it off the ground by October of this year. And then lastly, FY16, that's the cold inspection, dry dock, and ag lab. Uh, that can't get started until we finish this one yeah, at 515 DAP. So we're looking at probably first quarter of next year to get that one going as well. And then lastly, second span, we're moving along on second span. We're doing the environmental clearances. We're going to be moving forward with uh, the final design. Uh, consultants are going to uh, give us their proposal for final design. That should take six months. So we're hoping to get, you know, get started on, on second span early next year to bid it out and get into construction. I know we're looking to, our completion target date is 2023 to have it complete. So, you know, it's an aggressive timeline, but we were, everything's lining up to, to meet that deadline. That completes our, our report. Any questions? Thank you, Omar. Oh, I think every, every any meeting that we, that we have, Omar, everybody wants to know about the completion for the second span. Second so, span, 2023. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, it, that's, it's that's great. Time. So yeah, Luis has been giving us information. I know you've been working on it uh, a lot. So, so, uh, but yeah, I mean, the trade, everybody, every user is, is, is very excited second about Second quarter, it. third quarter, fourth quarter? Uh, shooting for fall. between second and fourth quarter. <laughs> fall. Fall of 2023. <laughs> if it doesn't ring. Huh? Tentative. Between June and December. Well, just put yeah, it this way. There's, time. <laughs> well, there's a lot of moving parts, obviously, yeah. but things are moving forward. Uh, everything <laughs> seems to be happening at once. Uh, as we all know, you know, part of the process is the GSA process, and that's what's taking us so long to even get us to groundbreaking on the DAP-15. If not, we would have started it two, three years ago. Right. And we, we would have been done by now. But uh, things are lining up, like Omar said. And, and thank you for that report. Uh, very comprehensive. And uh, we'll, be, we'll, be, we'll be giving you updates as, as needed. Uh, further, uh, regarding the, the Gafete Unico, we're going to be doing a bridge connect on the 24th of this month. And it's precisely for that reason. 
uh, to, to shed more light on, on, on this, on this new, uh, process improvement. Uh, you know, as we, as we all know, you know, these are, these are process improvements we've been asking for. We've been talking about for a long time. I think other bridges and other regions are doing similar things. Uh, so now it's our turn, but it's the growing pains, right? You know, that it, you, you can't get around it, you know, not everybody, but that's why, as Tony was mentioning, it's important, it's imperative to be part of all these associations and be continue that education because the outreach is what's going to allow the truck drivers, the, the members of these associations to really be in line with what really needs to get done to avoid the bottlenecking, to avoid the backups. Uh, so we'll be working on that on the 24th. So I, I you know, I, as, I, as I always do, I recommend everybody, uh, I think we're going to be doing it in person, correct? I think we're limited to the amount of people, so we'll send out a notice about that, but uh, it'll also be virtual, live streamed. So look forward to that. And then real quick, uh, next up I have um, Hector Villarreal with Comse Noreste in Monterrey. So we visited with him a week after the Bridge Board approved our institutional sponsorship package with them uh, in Monterrey. We've been members of Comse for several years now, but now we're taking it to an extra level. And he wants to talk about some other some other ideas we discussed while we were on our trip over there. And this is a potential to, again, to increase productivity, to ensure that we're doing the right thing by trade, and, and, and more importantly, to continue to educate the trade. So at this time, I'd like to call Hector Villarreal to give us a quick brief on what's going on with the new uh, new programs. Buenas tardes, un saludo a este honorable consejo eh, y a todos sus, sus miembros, consejeros. Mi nombre es Héctor Villarreal Muraira, soy director general de, del Consejo Mexicano de Comercio Exterior, es el Mexican Foreign Trade Council, eh, estoy en Monterrey. Somos una organización sin fines de lucro que promo, nos dedicamos a promover el comercio exterior, tanto de exportación como importación. Y trabajamos también en lo que es la seguridad en la cadena logística. Eh, tenemos ya desde 1962 como organización empresarial. Es una asociación de empresarios. Estamos cumpliendo en este mes de junio 59 años. Eh, tenemos más de 130 empresas uh, asociadas. Prácticamente eh, son exportadores o importadores, tanto del estado de Nuevo León, de Monterrey, como de los estados de Tamaulipas, Coahuila, Durango y, y Chihuahua. Trabajamos en esta, en esta región. Eh, para que se den una idea, representamos eh, a través de nuestros socios el 65% de la exportación de, de Nuevo León, alrededor de eh, 25 billones de dólares, 25 billion dollars, de 40 mil, que son, eh, de, de sí, 40 mil billion dollars, que son las exportaciones del Estado de Nuevo León. Eh, y en, en continuación a la visita que tuvieron Mr. Luis Bazán y Mr. Ezequiel Ordóñez hace dos, dos semanas y media allá en nuestras oficinas, pues eh, eh, es que ahora estoy con mucho gusto aquí con ustedes para seguir trabajando en eh, la promoción del puente de FAR en todas nuestras empresas asociadas eh, y pues no nada más en los socios, sino en toda lo que es la comunidad empresarial que participa en comercio exterior. Eh, estamos muy interesados en tener pues, una uh, mejor relación cada día con, con el Far International Bridge. Eh, por tal motivo, pues eh, bueno, son socios nuestros desde hace eh, varios años. Y ahora con este patrocinio lo que estamos haciendo es eh, que aparezca el, el Far International Bridge en todas nuestras publicaciones, que tenga presencia tanto en las publicaciones digitales como en todos los impresos para promover pues también el, el, el uso ¿no? y dar a conocer todos los proyectos tan importantes que tienen de, de expansión para los próximos años. Eh, también a través de este patrocinio que, que, que tienen, pues poder eh, hacer una serie de webinars y también eh, una serie de reuniones presenciales. Tenemos agendado ya para el mes de de julio y agosto, un webinar cada mes, y para el mes de, de octubre y de noviembre ya unas reuniones presenciales con, con empresarios allá en, en Monterrey. Estamos también trabajando y hemos ya platicado durante varias semanas de la eh, firma de un MOU, de un Memorandum of Understanding, entre Far International Bridge y, y Comse, eh, Comse Noreste, para poder trabajar en, en algunos aspectos, entre ellos 
pues eh, el, el revisar el proceso de cruce, eh, siempre buscando que sea cada vez más ágil, tanto para la exportación como para la importación, trabajar en lo que es la seguridad de la cadena logística y también en, en temas de infraestructura, ¿no? Eh, recomendaciones sobre carreteras, puntos de inspección, aduanas, que tuviéramos a, a bien hacer allá con eh, el gobierno mexicano. Eh, Comse es una organización a nivel nacional. Nosotros representamos a estos cinco estados que les mencionaba en el nor noreste de, de México, pero hay un, una oficina en cada estado y en Comse Nacional también eh, tenemos mucha eh, representación a, a, con las secretarías de, de Estado del del gobierno federal en, en México. Entonces, pues eh, quería simplemente exponer lo que estamos haciendo y pues platicarles o comentarles que vamos a seguir eh, pues dando seguimiento para concretar, si Dios quiere, un, un acuerdo de colaboración entre Power International Bridge y Coms. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias, gracias. Por, gracias. por venir a, por ir a, a visitarnos. Me ha tocado estar en algunos eventos con ustedes. De hecho, en Toluca estuvimos hace un, unos ah, cuantos sí. años. Eh, y pues, bueno, creo que la organización de ustedes embona perfectamente con lo que, que andamos buscando, entonces esperemos seguir trabajando. Muy bien, muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Sí, gracias a todos. Sí. Nomás un, un, una pregunta. Eh, oh, gracias por darse la vuelta, porque ya sé que está, viene de, de Mo, fuera Monterrey, y, ¿eh? y a estar aquí presente por, para conocerte. No, no, te, no tenía el gusto como Erga, pero a mí ya no me saca Luis. Eh, <risa> tanto, pero... <risa> Una, una pregunta, ¿qué industrias ha estado viendo con la pandemia hace poquito y que les afectó tanto a la, los exportadores y importadores de Monterrey? ¿Y qué cambio está viendo con lo que está pasando con la nueva nafta? ¿Qué, qué, qué? Digo, yo, yo los veo con mis clientes, pero ¿Ah? yo quiero oír su opinión y, y a ver si refuerza un poquito lo que ha, ha, ha dicho mis compañeros aquí del consejo. Bueno, de hecho el, el sector exportador se ha recuperado ya el, este pasado mes de, de abril, mayo, ya está los números están arriba de lo que se venían presentando antes de, de la pandemia, ¿no? Ha sido sí. el sector que ha sacado adelante la economía. Eh, prácticamente, por ejemplo, la industria de eh, electrodomésticos ha sido, eh, ha crecido mucho, bueno, la automotriz empieza también a repuntar, eh, agroalimentos también. Eh, prácticamente ya están a los niveles que se estaba exportando antes, pues en todos los sectores. El sector a lo mejor más... Eh, castigado pues ha sido el tema de servicios, ¿no? Pero pues esperemos que pronto se, se recupere. A nivel eh, de exportación, digo, ya estamos prácticamente igual o, o con mayores, mejores cifras que antes sí. de la pandemia. ¿no? Sí. Pues yo, yo como por ejemplo, yo he escuchado mucho el automotriz que está afectado, que unos meses está cerrado y están bien atrasados y... y... Yo no sé cómo los fue a los, los acereros de Monterrey, porque está bien reconocido Monterrey por el uh -huh. acero y, a lo, y mucho del, del metal, con, ya con los impuestos que pusieron ahí de, de nafta y todo eso, todo lo que están poniendo ahí. No sé cómo salieron afectados, porque Monterrey está reconocido por, por el acero. ¿verdad? Sí, no, también se está exportando eh, mucho acero. O sea, ya se están, como mencionaba, a los niveles de antes de la pandemia, ¿no? Okay. No, no, pues gracias por darse la vuelta y muy agradecido por sus Muchas gracias por la oportunidad. Gracias. Mucho gusto. Gracias. Gracias. Muchas gracias, Héctor. Y sí, pues como pueden ver, digo, están haciendo cosas interesantes, progresivas, y pues necesitamos que ser parte de, es, de esas experiencias, ¿no? Y les agradecemos al, al Board of Directors por habernos permitido ese, ese acuerdo, que ojalá que lo podamos cumplir próximamente. That concludes my director's report, and we're done with the engineer's report, so... Item three, which is administrative. And we need the approval of the minutes for May 19, 2021. Motion. Motion Mr. Martin, all in favor say aye. 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 We need a motion for discussion and action of any on Border Trade Alliance BTA 2021 membership silver uh, patron. Level renewal for 10,000. We need a motion for that. A motion. A motion by Mr. Martinez. Second. Second by Mr. Flores. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I think we need a motion to adjourn. But before we adjourn, I just want to say happy Father's Day to all the fathers here and have a great, have a great weekend. Happy Father's Day. To, to,
everybody and all of, all of our youth. Feliz Día del Padre. Thank you. We need a motion to adjourn. Motion. Yeah, motion for Mr. Flores. Second. Second, Mr. Martinez. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, everyone. Right on time. One o'clock. <laughs> Thank you.